Something strange going on with Comet 3 AI. Reports suggest NASA instruments might have picked up on sudden, repeating events from this interstellar visitor. If the reality of these observations holds true, they could demonstrate multiple wavelength activity spikes across different types of radiation. What if none of these are random flares? What if a pattern emerges, one that could reveal something profound about how interstellar comets behave when they come into contact with new influences? We're going to explore what scientists call a burst fingerprint, examining how such events might appear across infrared, ultraviolet, X-ray, and radio frequencies. Different instruments would perceive things differently, and that combination could tell us exactly what's causing these potential outbursts. Could these be brought on by the sun's weather events? When the sun hurls charged magnetic fields and particles into space, what occurs when they collide with a comet that's been drifting in the cold of interstellar space for billions of years? We'll determine whether any pattern might match a rotating model, like a lighthouse. Imagine gas jets and dust sweeping past us as the comet spins, creating regular pulses of activity. Everything we talk about stays based on actual physics, wild, not claims. No science fiction, just the real mystery of what takes place when an ancient wanderer from another star system receives heat from the sun for possibly the first time in eons. If the data truly contains a fingerprint, it points to a physical cause we can understand and test. The question is, what narrative will that fingerprint provide us? So, if these bursts that have been reported are real, they wouldn't just show up as simple changes. Genuine outbursts of comets create all-encompassing signatures across the electromagnetic spectrum. And that's where things get interesting. If you adore this straightforward approach to space mysteries, tap subscribe. It really helps support content like this. Think of it as comparing the cosmos to a crime scene. Each wavelength of light tells a different part of the story. In infrared, we'd anticipate the absorption of carbon dioxide lines suddenly brightening when trapped CO ice vents rapidly from deep within the comet at specific infrared absorption wavelengths. The James Webb Space Telescope would be perfect for catching this. It's designed to spot exactly these kinds of molecular signatures. Switch to optical light and you'd see the cyanogen emission lines rise. When fresh molecules get blasted out of the nucleus and hit sunlight, they break apart and glow with that characteristic green color we sometimes see in comet tails. Ground-based telescopes like Gemini or the Very Large Telescope could track these changes in real time. Ultraviolet tells a different tale. Solar UV light causes intense photochemistry during outbursts, separating organic matter from water molecules. The Hubble Space Telescope's UV capabilities would reveal this molecular destruction happening live. Here's where it gets really intriguing. X-rays. When solar wind particles collide with neutral gas from a comet, they swap electrons through a process known as charge exchange. Consequently, X-rays are released that space-based observatories like SWIFT can recognize. Charge exchange X-rays occur when solar wind ions grab electrons from cometary gas, releasing them as X-ray energy. Finally, radio telescopes might catch the 18C M-line getting stronger, the radiomolecular signature of hydroxyl, water that has been broken apart. When sunlight breaks down water vapor, it results in O-radicals that release energy at this particular radio frequency. The 18C M-line serves as a radio guide, showing us where water is being destroyed. A coherent fingerprint across all these bands wouldn't be random. It would point to a real physical mechanism driving the outburst. Different processes create different patterns. Therefore, the combination acts like a diagnostic tool. Here's the big idea. If there are bursts, they leave traces throughout the electromagnetic spectrum. When infrared, optical, X-ray, and radio signatures jump together in a coordinated way, that is not an accident. That's the comet breathing and exhaling, releasing stored energy in a way we can measure and understand. We can test this hypothesis like detectives, checking each wavelength, band by band, spectral line by line. 
The appeal lies in the variety of ways we could see various components of the puzzle. Together, they would precisely inform us what is transpiring within this ancient visitor from another star. If the timing of fingerprints coincides with solar patterns of behavior, we'd have a smoking gun for what's triggering these potential events, solar weather as the hidden switch. What would happen if the key to comprehending these potential explosions was not the comet itself, but rather what's going on with our sun? Researchers could check the timings of any bursts against information from the DSCOVR and a spacecraft, which monitor the state of the solar wind in real time. These satellites sit between Earth and the Sun, giving us advanced warning when coronal mass ejections or high-speed solar wind streams are heading toward us. If a comet explosion followed the arrival of ACME by a few hours or days, that would be a clear physical trigger we could test and verify. The mechanism is straightforward. When more charged particles from solar storms hit the comet's coma, they dump extra energy into the gas and dust cloud through collisions and electromagnetic interactions. Think about it this way. 3i has been passing through the near emptiness of interstellar space for potentially billions of years. Its surface, as well as any exposed ices, has never experienced the intense charged particle environment close to a moving star. When our sun's weather suddenly intensifies and slams into this ancient visitor, the comet could react in ways we haven't seen before. Solar storms turning a comet on and off like a cosmic light switch that would be remarkable evidence of how dynamic the space environment really is. However, what if the pattern was not simply tied to the sun's activity? What if there was something even more clockwork about these possible occurrences? This is where the rotational lighthouse model comes in. If more than one burst occurred at frequent intervals, it might indicate something rotation-locked, suggesting that the events are directly related to the comet's rotation. Picture a rotating lawn sprinkler. Each time the water jet sweeps past your position, you get soaked. Then there's a gap until the next rotation brings the jet around again. A comet with active vents on its surface would work the same way. As 3i, Atlas rotates different areas of its nucleus face the Sun. If there are regions with more volatile ices or structural flaws, they might release jets of gas and dust when solar heating hits them at the right angle. From our perspective on Earth, we would see these jets once per rotation, a repeating period. By determining the time between potential bursts, astronomers could infer the comet's rotation period. Maybe it rotates once every three days or every 12 hours, or at some other period we haven't yet pinned down. The real test would be determining whether the multi-wavelength fingerprint we discussed earlier repeats in phase with this timing. If the infrared CO spike, the optical cyanogen emission, and the radio line glow all strengthen together on a regular basis, that would strongly suggest jets anchored to stable surface vents rotating with the nucleus. Locked rotation means these aren't just random events, they're tied to the comet's spin, dependable and measurable. And here's the crucial follow-up inquiry. If material is being pushed away by jets in preferential directions as the comet rotates, that should create a tiny rocket-like effect. The comet's orbit should then deviate slightly from pure gravitational motion, leaving traces we could detect along its course. If these bursts are real and connected to rotating jets, they should leave a signature in 3i's trajectory itself. Astronomers track this using what are called the A1, A2, and A3 parameters, mathematical terms that describe how objects are pushed by jet thrust in three directions, radially away from the sun, tangentially in the orbital plane, and perpendicular to the orbital plane. 